You are listening to Rabbi Arya Wolby of Torch in Houston, Texas. This is the Living Jewishly Podcast. All right, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Living Jewishly Podcast. This week, we're going to learn Simon 12, Simon Yudbeis, the 12th chapter of Halacha in the Kitzur Shulchan Aruch, in the abridged version of the Shulchan Aruch. And it's about preparation for prayer. So the halacha, the Torah tells us, the Torah tells us that prepare to meet your God, O Israel. This is in Amos chapter 4, verse 12. One should prepare themselves before meeting with Hashem in prayer, dressed in respectful clothes, as if he were meeting with a dignitary. One praying alone at home should also dress appropriately. So if one is not going to synagogue and they're praying at home, they should also be dressed appropriately for prayer. In places where wearing a belt is the norm, or by the way, where wearing shoes is the norm, it is forbidden to pray without them. It is proper to give tzedakah charity before prayer, as it says, I shall behold your face through charity. This is in Psalms chapter 17, verse 15. Additionally, halacha 5, additionally, one should accept upon themselves the mitzvah of love your fellow as yourself, which was just in this week's Torah portion that we just learned prior to praying. And one should intend to love every Jew like themselves because if there is division below, there is a lack of unity above. And when there is peace below, our prayers are desired and accepted above. So if someone has a quarrel with their fellow, resolve that quarrel, and then your prayers have a much easier time being accepted. Our sages teach us to ensure that we use the restroom prior to prayer. If one is in need of relieving themselves, it is prohibited to pray or learn Torah before doing so. If one already prayed before relieving themselves, there are different determinations whether or not the prayer must be redone. If a person is able to hold themselves for the amount of time which would be equivalent to an hour and a fifth, which would be about an hour and 15 minutes, then it's fine. But if not then they might need to pray again. It, this should be asked to your bona fide rabbi. Number seven, if one cannot hold back from flatulence during prayer, amida and shema, it is better to miss the proper time of prayer than recite prayer when one has a dirty body. If the time for prayer passes, it's considered unavoidable, and the next prayer should be doubled up, and this is a concept we're going to learn something called tashlumim. Tashlumim is to pay up, so to speak, or to double up. If someone misses a prayer by mistake, not by their own willful doing, they can pray the next prayer twice, and that will make up. So for example, if someone was hospitalized, God forbid, and they weren't released till after the time of the morning prayer, so then they can pray the afternoon prayer twice, and that would cover for the morning prayer and the afternoon prayer. If one can only refrain for the time of reciting the Shema from flatulence or having an unclean body, then they should don their tefillin with a bracha, their talus and tefillin with a bracha, just before the Shema and remove it right after the Shema. One should wash their hands till the wrist before prayer, even if they already wash their hands in the morning. We learned previously that one should wash their hands when they wake up in the morning, this doesn't also qualify a person for prayer. Before prayer, before every prayer, a person should wash their hands properly before walking in and praying. If one does not have access to water, the hands should be cleaned on anything that cleans and then begin praying. So if a person has a wipe, if a person has a towel, they should wipe their hands so that their hands are clean. Seeking water pre-prayer should not result in one missing minion or the proper time for prayer. One should do everything they can to pray with a minion. Our sages teach that Hashem does not turn away the prayers of a minion, even if sinners are among them. So if there's a quorum of 10 adults who come to pray in front of Hashem, Hashem says, okay, you got me. I can't say no. So many of you are asking, I have to approve. I have to acquiesce to your requests. A person traveling should find a place to sleep that is close to where a minion can be found. So if a person is going to be traveling uh, through Atlanta, to, you know, so 
find a place to stay which is nearby a minion so that when you wake up, you shouldn't have to travel so far to get a minion uh, because then what could result is that you'll have traffic in the morning, you have other things that come up, and then you'll miss praying with a minion. So it's an important emphasis to have all the time. It is a great mitzvah to pray in a synagogue or study hall as they are holy places. Even if the minion is inconsistent, it's still a mitzvah, a special mitzvah to pray in a synagogue or study hall, as opposed to praying at home or in some private room. Even if one is praying alone, it is best to pray in a synagogue or study hall. So if someone is not able to have a minion, or if they don't have a minion in their town or in their neighborhood, it's best to find a synagogue to pray in, even if there's not going to be a minion there. If one studies Torah in a study hall, they should pray there with the minion, even if the synagogue is nearby. So why? Because a place in which people study Torah is a holy place. You should pray in the place that is holy like that. If one studies Torah in a study hall, they should pray there with a minion, even if there is a synagogue nearby. Okay, that was number 18. Number 19. However, one who doesn't study in a study hall should definitely pray in a shul with a larger minion. If there are two synagogues in a city, one should always go to the further location so that they also merit with each step that they take going to the shul. Because you don't only get the mitzvah for the actual prayer with the minion, you also get for the travel to the minion. So if a person is going to the further shul, he accumulates more mitzvahs. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi taught us that one should always be among the first ten to be counted in the minion. Because even if another hundred people show up, the first ten get the merits of them all. So if you're of the first ten and there are another hundred, two hundred, a thousand people who come after, guess what? You get the merits of all of their prayer because you're the one who made the minion. Additionally, our sages teach that anyone who goes to synagogue morning and evening to pray properly is guaranteed a long life. I want to just share with you that there was a Today, one of the largest philanthropists in the Jewish community in New York, young guy, he's my age, and he was doing very well in business, and then his business fell apart, and he went to one of the rabbis, and the rabbi said to him, if you want to know the segula, the omen, the merit that will give you success in your livelihood, don't pray any minion without a minion. Don't pray any prayer without a minion. So he accepted upon himself to pray every prayer with a minion. And today, not only he's one of the largest philanthropists, but he also travels wherever he goes around the globe. Any business deal, he's going to Manhattan. He goes to to any place. He always travels with a minion that he pays their salary so that they're always with him. So he can never, ever miss a minion. So if he's stuck on the side of the road with a a busted tire, he has a minion. He's always traveling with an entourage so that he always has a minion. That's how important praying with a minion is, not only for his financial success, but I'm I'm sure for his spiritual success as well. Number 23, a person should always have a set synagogue they pray at regularly, and a person should have a set place in the synagogue where they sit for prayer regularly. And anywhere within eight feet of their set seat is considered their place. Also, one praying at home should have their set place for prayer. So if someone is praying at home, for whatever reason, they don't have a minion in their town, they don't have a a minion to pray with, they don't have a synagogue perhaps, they should have a set place where where they pray. As our sages teach us, that Hashem loves our prayer so much, He waits for our prayer in our set place. It is also beneficial for one to pray near a wall, number 25, and number 26, one should not pray with a wicked person. It is a special mitzvah to run to shul and to do any mitzvah, even on Shabbos. So we know you're not supposed to run on Shabbos, but if you're going to shul, you can run on Shabbos. And for any mitzvah a person does, you should run to do the mitzvahs of Hashem. One should not walk into synagogue panting and out of breath. Therefore, one should rest briefly prior to entering. One should have awe and reverence before standing 
in front of the Almighty and recite, Va'ani brov chazdecho avo el beisecho, eshtachave el heichal kotshecho biyurasecho. These are in the beginning of our prayer book. If you open up our prayer book, the paragraph of Matovu, how goodly are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel. As for me, this, this, this verse, as for me, through your abundant kindness, I will enter your house. I will prostrate myself towards your holy sanctuary in awe of you. What does this verse tell us? And this verse is from Psalms chapter 5, verse 8. This verse is telling us that we need to have awe and reverence for the synagogue, like one asking permission to open in prayer and then proceed like one standing in front of a king. Number 30. When Jews have their own communities, like in Israel, it is proper to don talis and tefillin at home and walk like that to synagogue. If in a place with non-Jews or unclean streets, it is best to don the talis and tefillin in the shul lobby, as it is a great mitzvah to walk into shul all dressed already with talis and tefillin. Number 31. If one is unable to go to the synagogue for whatever reason, They should try to gather 10 people in their home to pray with a minion, regardless of being in the synagogue. Okay, so if the people were in the synagogue, you can ask them, come to my house as well, uh, so that we can have a minion here. Uh, So for those of you who are listening to this podcast, I just want to remind you that on the description of this podcast, you have a link to follow along with these notes uh, so that you can... Download them, you can print them, and you can follow along while listening to this podcast. Number 32, if putting together their own minion is impossible, one should at least pray at home during the time that prayer is happening in shul. So if one is not able to put a minion together in their home, they should pray during the time that synagogue is having their minion. If one desperately needs to go to work prior to minion in the morning, and it is forbidden to work prior to prayer that we know, one can pray at home immediately at sunrise. If one must eat prior to the completion of the shul davening, they may do so if they are praying at home. However, if they're praying at shul, you shouldn't leave before the minion is over. The community can obligate one another to build a synagogue, study hall, and buy Torah books to learn from. So this is an obligation on every member of the community that we need to build a shul. We need to build a base medrash, a study hall, and we need to buy Torah books. And people in the community can obligate one in, one another to that responsibility. In a community that doesn't regularly have minion, the members of the community can demand attendance from their fellow members till they start coming regularly. Hold them accountable. And then even people studying Torah should be forced to assist with the community minion as there is a proper time for prayer and a proper time for learning Torah. My dear friends, please, if you have any questions, you're welcome to reach out to me at awolbe at torchweb.org, A-W-O-L-B-E at T-O-R-C-H-W-E-B dot O-R-G. I look forward to hearing from you. And please like and share this podcast. You can also rate it if you'd like. That helps with our rankings. And I look forward to seeing you next week with another installment of the Living Jewishly podcast. Have a terrific day.